There are six things that God hates. And as believers, we must be willing to find out what God loves and what he hates. The Bible did not leave us without a clue on what God hates. We will try to expose those demonic, ungodly characters that the enemy may want to use to make us not be at peace with God. Remember that God is our Father. And every good father has certain things that he hates and as obedient children, we must not be ignorant of what God hates. Here are seven ungodly things that God hates. Number one is pride. This was the original sin of mankind. Man wanted to be like God more than he wanted to be with God. This was also the sin of Satan who was also an archangel of God. He wanted to be like God instead of being with God. The book of Isaiah chapter 14 verse 13 tells us, For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. That was what Lucifer said in his heart. He wanted to run an opposing government so that the creation had an option to choose between God or him. Remember that God made him as the finest cherub, but that wasn't enough for him. He wanted more. Pride is the only sin that can stand in the presence of God and still look holy. Pride is of the heart. It is when a person begins to think too highly of themselves. Those who truly have gotten to the pinnacle of success by the grace of God understand that it is not so much their effort that brought them thus far as much as the grace of God. Every time a person works in pride, the jealousy of God is kindled against him, and God will surely bring him low. The Bible speaks of our perfect role model, Jesus Christ, who had opportunity to be equal with God while on earth, but chose not to. We see this in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 to 11. Who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The second thing that God hates is a lying tongue. The Bible calls Satan the father of all liars. God is not your father if you have a lying tongue. The Bible speaks of the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of Truth. If you have the Spirit of God, you won't want to lie. There are a lot of people who find it easy to tell lies. They are not conscious of the Spirit of Truth in them. Our words are supposed to always be seasoned with grace and truth. The Bible says in James chapter 3 verse 11 to 12, does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Thus, no spring yields both salt water and fresh. You can't have the spirit of truth inside of you and be very comfortable with lying. Your words must have integrity. You must be careful what you say to people. When people know you as someone who doesn't love truth, they will never trust you. Nobody wants to be associated with a liar because a liar today is a potential betrayer tomorrow. As a true Christian, you must love truth and one of the key ways we live in truth is when we fill our mind with the truth in his word. The third thing that God hates are hands that shed innocent blood. 
God loves and wants to protect the innocent because he is a good judge. Throughout the Bible, everyone who was killed for their innocence, God avenged them. Those who seek to take innocent lives in any part of the world will surely face the judgment of God. In one of the commandments in Exodus chapter 20 verse 13, You shall not murder, the Bible says. God is against killing the innocent, whether it's an innocent child or an adult. There is no reason for you to take the life of another person. If God allowed them to come into this world, then they are also free to live as you are living freely. The earth is of the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and everything in it belongs to him and if we try to take issues into our hands without first confirming if the person is guilty or not, then we are guilty of killing. The fourth thing is a heart that devises evil plans. God is the one who knows the true intent of men. Someone can laugh with you but have a very bad intent inside your heart. We must learn to constantly judge our motive and ask that God search our heart to see if we are holding on to anything evil or any evil plan. King David committed a great evil before God because there was a wicked plan in his heart. The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 11 verse 2 to 5, One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was very beautiful, and David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, She is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliamad, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him, and he slept with her. Now she was purifying herself from her monthly uncleanness. Then she went back home, the woman conceived and sent word to David saying, I am pregnant. After sleeping with the wife of his servant, he gave an order that her husband should be killed in battle. And because of what he did, God was displeased. In 2 Samuel chapter 11 verse 26 to 27, the Bible says, When Uriah's wife heard that her husband was dead, she mourned for him. After the time of mourning was over, David had her brought to his house and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing David had done displeased the Lord. God is not happy when we devise evil plans because of greed or selfishness or any other vices. The fourth thing are feet that are swift to run into evil. When we love to run into evil, God hates it. He hates to see that his children delight in evil. To rush into evil, it means that you demonstrate great delight to run into sin and be a partaker of it. When you love to be among wrong company and you delight to witness evil, God is saying that he hates it. You must not be comfortable around sin. You must be a witness of the truth in his word. Learn to shun and hate evil and you will be the delight of God. The sixth thing is a false witness who pulls out lies. God is saying that he hates people who defames other people's characters and reputation. Have you seen people say false things about other people? Be careful when people come to speak to you about other people. Learn to judge the motive of the one who is speaking. God hates when you are called to testify and you pick a side because of sentiment. We must be witnesses of truth and not of lies. The seventh thing is a person who stirs up conflict in a community. It is demonic for you to cause division among people. The main strategy of the enemy is to bring hatred and division and so if a person is always trying to make other people strive, then he or she is not working according to the word of God. Some people prefer to have fights, contention, quarrels, rather than to have peace and harmony. As children of God, we must learn to walk in the path of truth and peace. We must be doers of the word of God. 
We must be peacemakers and not troublemakers. Learn to search your motives daily. God bless you.